lovies. I know it has been a super long time, but you know, c'est la vie. Um, so today what I want to get us started with is I want to introduce you to the books that I've been reading this year. Um, this was my first year doing any kind of self-improvement reading or self-help reading, whatever you want to call it. So I just want to introduce you to what I went through uh, literature-wise this year. So my first one, like ever, was Relationship Goals by Michael Todd. And this is my pastor. Uh, he is actually based in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I've been watching his sermons for about a year now, like during the hardest, yeah, I think the hardest season of my life is when I got introduced to his ministry and it was game changing. So um, I think I'm just going to take you through a couple of my favorite parts. So what I thought was really awesome that he says in this book is that have the courage to say God wants a relationship for me. He wants you to have a best friend, even though the last one stabbed you in the back. He wants you to have pastors and mentors who create a safe place to grow and become. He wants you to be in a marriage that works and is marked by love, honor, respect, and fun. Granted, your past relationships might have been, well, the opposite of that, but God is a redeemer, so he can take whatever is broken and jacked up and work it for your good. And I just think that that's super powerful, super important. Um, another thing that I really love that he says is singleness is the time for I. Invest, imagine, and inspire. And then another thing he says is God says you're called, loved, significant, forgiven, his masterpiece, and his child. Right? Um, and so I think for me, I was having some identity issues like when certain things leave and I think we saw what that looks like this year when certain things leave who are you and with what's left what is your identity stand on and I think this book has a lot of really great principles about that of course you're not going to agree with everything that someone says but it's still a super solid book I'm trying to figure out where to put it there we go the next thing that I went to was small doses by Amanda Seals and this book first off her comedy special is hilarious um but this book is awesome it just goes through a lot of small tidbits and it has a lot of different mediums in it right so like there's poetry there's drawings there's like photography in it um so one of the pieces that I really liked is a wellness section this world will beat you black and blue and tell you that it is your duty as a black woman to grit your teeth and take it. Fuck that. Take care of yourself. Take breaks, travel, meditate, masturbate, go to therapy, clap back, indulge in your hobby, treat yourself, say no, say yes, cry, read, allow for excitement, right? And so I just thought that that was an awesome list to get because a lot of the times as like a strong black woman you're not supposed to take those breaks you're not supposed to give to yourself um and I thought that was fantastic another piece of this that I really like is a section where she talks about arrogance versus confidence and the sentence says confidence does not negate humility. In fact, it breathes it. It is the humility in your confidence that allows for growth and learning for which arrogance does not allow space. Um, and as somebody who is consistently told that I love myself a little too much, I really appreciate the truth and light that she brings through this book, especially for certain kinds of personalities, which I I am one. Also, she talks about being a creative in there and the process of that and having um, a lot of different mediums that you engage with artistically. And that for me was really awesome. The next book, y'all see this piece of here attacking me? Do you see it? Okay. <laughs> the next book that I got into was The Sacrament of Happy by Lisa Harper. I actually found her on YouTube, like her sermons, and she just seemed like a really nice and jovial person that I would want to be friends with. So I decided to pick up her book, especially because she was emphasizing happiness. Um, so a piece of this book that I really like was she highlighted the 10 practices of happy. 
happiness. Uh, one, attitude. Two, connection. Three, meaning. Four, creativity. Five, gratitude. Six, mindfulness. Seven, health. Eight, resilience. Nine, spirituality. Ten, giving back. And I could have swore there was another part in this book, but I'm probably tripping. Oh, no, here it is. Found it. Okay. Real, God-imbued happiness is not the absence of sadness or badness. Rather, it is hanging on to the truth of his sovereign goodness, regardless of what's going on within or around us. And then she um, quotes Proverbs 14, 13. Even in laughter, the heart may ache and the end of joy may be grief. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. It really comes to the subject of like, does God want us to be happy? Is God happy? I have a hard time separating, um, or I guess consolidating rather, the Old Testament burn cities down God and the New Testament, um, I love you and I'm going to take care of you, God. So I think that this book is a great way to kind of move into happy from a spiritual perspective. Yes. Ooh, also about that small doses book, there is a like ally section for like white people who want to be down with the cause and everything. And it's, it's choice. So that book's not just for like black women. Okay. Uh, the next book I went to was T.D. Jake's Crushing. So I actually grew up in his church and going to his private school. So something about like his voice just feels homey, you know? Okay, so this book is really good because it's about the pressure seasons of your life and God putting pressure on you and how you turn that pressure into power and how God uses those tough times. So one of my favorite parts is when he says, here's where you must realize God did not arrange every single step of your life to this point to leave the weight of your future solely in your own hands. And I think that that's awesome. He keeps going and says, he provides a blessing and lesson in what seems to be random because it's all part of your cultivation. With God, nothing is wasted. Right? Like, I feel like a lot of the times I trust God and I don't trust myself. And I think that this book really helps you see that God is doing so much more heavy lifting than you give him credit for, right? That sometimes it's kind of the surrender to the process and to the pain and the difficulty that's important. Another part of this that I really enjoyed was you must accept this truth because God, sorry, hold on. Do you understand that Jesus has already done everything for you? You must accept this truth because God is more than satisfied with the wine he has produced in you. Keep in mind the metaphor is, is crushing. So it's the crushing of grapes into wine. So the crushing of you and your seed form in, in your grape form, and then you turn into wine from that crushing. God's satisfied with that. Um, and then he finishes off and says, you are God's trophy and he wants to show you off. So I think a lot of the times... I'm like, okay, I have to go through this thing. I have to be better. And I have a hard time being proud with that. Just saying, okay, I'm proud. God's proud. We're good. And so this book was a good way to do that. Let's pause and take a sip. Okay. So this one, The Body is Not an Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. I hope I'm not saying anybody's stuff wrong. This is The Power of Radical Self-Love. And I mean, that cover just, it grabs you, doesn't it? It's fantastic, I love it. Um, I've been str struggling more with body image stuff than I usually do um, in the quarantine. I think it's because I'm consistently dressed like a potato. Um, and then you're not like seeing other people really. So you're just constantly in this, um, this like space of just looking at you and like only you pretty much all the time. And the only other people that you really see are people that you're either super used to or people through like social media and things like that. So it was just a lot. So 
the book. Okay. One of my favorite things in this book is that she says there are three key tenets that will help us pry out of the mire of body judgment and shame. I call them the three pieces. They are make peace with not understanding, make peace with difference, make peace with your body. Um, and she goes through and she like breaks down those pieces and just kind of talks about how it's, it's okay. Like where you are is okay. Acceptance has been a huge thing this year for me, especially towards the end. A lot of messages have been talking about like accepting myself, accepting where I am, the power of like loving thine self, things of that nature, um, which you'll see over the course of the books, I believe. So there's that. She also talks about, um, we are invited to ask ourselves, what peace, power, or joy can be gained by deciding that this body I am inextricably tied to for the rest of my life is my enemy? If there is no access to peace, power, or joy in your current framework, then it simply doesn't serve you. So this book is really strong with the asking you to think. An unapologetic inquiry is what she calls them. And it just makes you go into yourself and figure out where you are, what's there, why is it there, is it serving you, and then what to replace it with if it's not. Um, another big thing that I loved about this book is she talks about like if you've read the entire book and everything, you will still have days when you do not love your body. Here's the good news. It is perfectly okay. I will personally congratulate you for arriving at the holy grail of the 10 tools, grace, right? And that's awesome to me, right? Because I think I'm the kind of person I like to achieve. I like to strive. I like to succeed. So for me, I'm like, okay, I read the book. I engaged with the thing. I should have these principles. They should be ingrained and they should be active. I should be working through it and I should be winning at it. And a great thing about that is that through grace, there is no winning, right? It's okay that there's going to be a day where you're like, yes, got it. Go Quint. Uh, right. And you're going to have other days where you're like, I don't like it. Not a fan. Not going. It's very the Grinch, you know? <laughs> so that was that book. And we're going to make a bit of a shift here, I think. Where I just decided I wanted to get my financial life together. Over the course of my adultish life, I realized that I've touched money and money has touched me. But when I look back, I'm always like, where did my money go? What am I doing with it? What's my future going to look like? I turned 23 um, this summer. And... At that time, I was just, only thing that was on my mind was like my student loan debt and trying to get that handled and what my financial future was going to look like. So I went to the internet, OBS, and I got Clever Girl Finance by Bola Sukun, Sukunbi. I hope I did that right. Sorry, doll. Um, but I believe she's a black woman. And that was important to me because what's happening socially is going to affect what's happening in your pocketbook. So I needed somebody who was writing to me. And that's why I started. I love this book because it starts with your mindset. It starts with saying, what do you think about money? What's your relationship to it? Why do you feel that way? Um, and that's a huge thing. How you feel about yourself and how you feel about money affects how you spend. It affects the kind of saving you do. It affects whether you invest or not. It's, it touches everything. So if you don't touch your mindset, you're not going to touch your money effectively or efficiently. So that was a great thing to start out with. Like I had to figure out my triggers. I had to find out that if I'm stressed or if I'm anxious, I shop. I want to go and I want to look at nice things and I want to purchase them and I want to feel the feeling of like a whole bunch of bags on my arm. And I had to deal with that. And I had to deal with like, where are my hot spots? I can't go to the mall on certain days with certain stores. Like I just have to let things go. So there's, <laughs> that's what I learned in this book. Um, 
So talking about that mindset, she says that you have to, to dream, right? So she says, yes, it's important to dream and to dream big at that. But there's a, a difference between having your dreams become your reality and having your dreams stay out of reach. And so she asks you to like have dreams, clarify your dreams, expand your dreams, right? And then she says that when you do that, thoughts like I will never be able to achieve this or why am I wasting my time? This will never happen. Or girl who, you please, will start to run through your mind on repeat. You'll need to train your mind to get rid of those thoughts whenever they come up and replace them with empowering ones. So I thought that was a, just a super strong point because again, for me, my thought is like, okay, I did the thing, I read it, my mind should automatically make all the shifts that it needs to make for me to be good. And it's nice to know that, no, these thoughts are going to pop up. You're going to have to do work. You're going to have to make affirmations. You're going to have to remind yourself why this matters. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I feel like I've said that I've enjoyed that a lot. But I enjoy what I enjoy. And that's my business. Okay, a next section that I really, really loved was rewarding yourself. The truth is you work so hard for your money. So it's only fair that you get to reward yourself every now and then, right? Well, yes, you definitely deserve to treat yourself and have fun. What girl doesn't love to look good, take nice trips and enjoy life, right? And so I feel like a lot of times when people try to talk to you about budgets or they try to talk to you about money, it's so restrictive and you're afraid that your life is going to be so small that it doesn't even look appe appealing. And so for me, I was really pleased to find that Full permission to enjoy your money, to enjoy your life is granted in this book. It's just about, you know, balancing, making the choices that are right for you. So I moved from that and I really liked that book. That was a great starting point for me. Fantastic. Helped me establish a budget, all kinds of things. But what I didn't love was that it was not addressing the time of life that I'm in. Um, and I'm a proud millennial. I'm at the bottom of the millennial thing. I was born in 97. So some people say it's not a millennial, but they can kiss it. So I got <laughs> Broke Millennial by Erin Lowry. Um, this book is a game changer for me anyway. This book goes through and of course it starts with like your mindset it starts with you establishing where are you with money? What does your money like look like? Um, and it's geared towards millennials. So it talks about, okay, you have student debt. How do we handle that? It talks about um, living with your parents. It talks about um, getting financially naked with your partner, sharing, splitting the bill with your friends. Things that we like care about and think about that I think an older generation wouldn't write down for us. Um, it also talks about that feeling of feeling too young, right? And the importance of starting early. So she says, money gives you choices. Money can allow you to quit a job, to be your own boss, or to step it up from sleeping in your own childhood bed and moving into an apartment on your own. Money helps you travel the world, upgrade to eating organic food, indulge your desire to brew your own craft beer, or snag the latest Apple product. You know, so again, because mindset is so important, it was important for me to hear that money is not just a tool or it's not just this fleeting thing coming in and out of my life. It grants agency. And because it grants agency, you have to be smart about what you're doing with it. And freedom is extremely important to me. So I'm like, okay, how do I get free and make sure I stay that way? So this book, super dope. I'm trying to make sure that was the only quote that I wanted from that one. Yep, super, super good. And it was so good that I was like, okay. I'm gonna get another. So I got Broke Millennial Takes on Investing by Aaron Lowry. And this one, this one's dope too. So that one's if you like, like your holistic money life. This one is more just specifically on investing. And investing can feel like this foreign, disgusting, scary thing, depending on who you are, especially she says for millennials. So it was really, really great to have this book 
go through, break down. What's a mutual fund? What's an index fund? What is an ETF? Um, should I get a robo advisor or a human advisor? Why should I invest in the first place? And she says, uh, why do you need to invest your money? The simplest reason is this. It's an efficient way to build wealth. Seasoned investors, personal finance writers, financial advisors, and pretty much anyone doling out money advice will wax poetic on the advantages of starting young and being consistent as an investor. The reason for this isn't wishful thinking about what they could have been if they'd only started sooner or been a little more aggressive with their contributions to the stock market. It's simple math. Um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of times, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm too young. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have enough money to start. And she goes through and just kind of debunks all those things. She lets you know where some great resources are and she never pushes you into one thing. She always tells you to figure out what's best for you. And so I really, really love that. Solid read. Okay, so now we're coming up on... Iyanla Van Zant. in the meantime. So this is the last full book I've read. And to me, it started slow or started, started a little less intriguing just for me and my personal stuff. But by the time I got to chapter nine, chapter nine was like, bam, I was like, ah, right. So it was awesome. And I think this book is awesome because it talks about what do you do in the meantime, in that middle, when you're waiting for the person God called you for, or when you are transitioning to something in life? Like I think 2020 is a huge in the meantime for everyone, because we're just waiting for COVID to be handled to the point that we can resume our normal lives. Normal. So solid, solid work here. Like all kinds of questions to ask yourself, all kinds of just strong principles to move through. So essentially what she does is she says that love is, love is a house and it has like a basement where you start not knowing you have a problem and then you move up through the house learning that you have problems, not knowing what to do about them. Then you learn what to do about them and eventually you get to love's attic where you can just automatically detect if you're not moving in love and you know better and you do better and it's it's dope. So one of my favorite quotes from this book, truth is love's mother and we all know it is not wise to lie to anyone's mother. Somehow, some way, mother always finds out that you are lying. When she does, there is hell to pay. One of life's most difficult challenges is being able to look at yourself honestly, acknowledging and accepting what you see. What makes the task all the more difficult is the belief that what we see translates into what's wrong with me. There is nothing wrong with you. Right? That is powerful to me. The fact that like truth is love's mother. Who thinks like that? That's fantastic. And if there is no truth, then like love don't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just solid work. Um, also, hearing that nothing's wrong with you is so impactful because I feel all day, every day, something's trying to tell you or things are trying to tell you, this is wrong with you. You need to do this better. You haven't done this yet. Da, 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 da. And so to have somebody be like, listen, the only thing that's even close to being wrong with you is that you are feeling a separation from God and from love that is inherent to you before you were here you were inherently love and connected to god and connected and it is through your like birth and through life that you forgot that connection and you you felt separation and so that's the only thing wrong with you and that's not wrong it's human right dope my next thing chapter nine you are going to be a fool period the thing you've got to decide is how many times you're going to be a fool. Two times, six times, 10 times. Give yourself a limit, but don't say you're not going to be a fool because you are going to be one at least once. People who avoid relationships in fear of being a fool need to get over it. Give yourself a prescribed number of times and just go for it. I'm the kind of person where I'm like, you ain't going to make a fool about me. It, no, I don't want to look dumb. And... Still, you look dumb, right? Because things happen and people make choices and you can't foresee everything 
And in the business of living, you going to get messy. And so I thought that that was so fantastic. That someone was just like, listen here, you got to be better. That's awesome. Okay. This next part is talking about doing one thing at a time. She says, you know, it's there. You know, it needs work. But you must also know there is no need to do it all in this lifetime. Do some, leave some, grow some, do a little more, grow a little more. If we just do what we can do, it will be more than enough to propel us forward. We keep working on ourselves because we believe that we must do it all right now. This is the same thing we do in our relationships. We convince ourselves that something is wrong and that it must be fixed immediately. It has to be perfect right now. Things will fall into and out of alignment as the world turns. Relax. Learn how to leave, sorry, learn how to choose to leave some things hanging. They won't bite you. They won't kill you. Leave them right where they are, knowing you can come back to them later. I, it is a lesson that I'm still trying to learn. <laughs> it is a lesson that I struggle with to not set something before me and think, you know, as again, puzzles. If I sit down and do a puzzle, I want that puzzle done today. If I sit down and do a craft I want it done today, if I sit down and do my hair I want it done, nails I want it done, book I'm trying to get it done, like this video I'm trying to get it done. So I think that there were so many things of my spirit that I I got addressed. And what I really love about pretty much all of these books, I'm gonna tell you, is they are all very cognizant about the importance of your mindset and your emotional standing. So they all ask you questions. They all kind of take you through certain work. I'm trying to think if one of them didn't, but almost all of them take you through work that you have to progress through. And they are asking you to be truthful with yourself for your progression. And I think that that's super dope. I'm gonna show you the next two that I'm gonna try to tear through, hopefully before New Year's. Uh, because like I said, Iyama is still working on me and God is still working on me about the not getting it all done at one point, but you know, Jesus loves me. Okay. So I'm reading, I thought it was just me, but it isn't by Brene Brown. I really love her Ted talks. So yeah. Um, it's feeling a little slowish for me. Like it's not hitting me over the head with truth as much as I wanted it to but I'm only maybe about halfway through so yeah let me know if you want me to tell you how this goes um this one is really mostly about shame and it's about using empathy to to handle shame it's about the tools for shame resilience um so yeah and then the next one I'm moving into is when women pray excuse me by T.D. Jakes uh, the same author who did Crushing. And I just, as a woman who loves me some Jesus, I'm like, you know what? A lot of the times it's so male centric. So I just wanted a book that said, here are some ladies who did their thing. Do your thing as well. Um, so yeah, that is my book list of what I've done this year reading wise. Let me know what you guys are reading. Let me know if you guys check any of them out and what you think about them and be good lovies.